We are live. Welcome to 2022's She-Hulk review miniseries, She-Hulk Attorney at Law. You know, this is meant to be a review of the entire show. Um, right now, it says that they are not... They're not currently planning on a season two, but if there is one in the future, then this review is of season one, and I will make another video for, yeah. I'm going to start by telling you this was a show that I really liked, and parts of it I absolutely loved. This video will have at least a few jokes, and I will get serious for a, a lot of it. I realize this video is long. I'm going to do what I can to make it worth your time. And I'm going to be speaking faster than... Because my back hurts. And let's see... Yeah, so this video is a review where if I spoil anything, I will verbally warn before I do so and hold up an index finger while I spoil. So you can mute and skip ahead until you see me lower my index finger. Also, please note, I will not be warning before spo yeah before spoilers for earlier entries in this franchise. I the show kind of assumes that you've watched the MCU up to this point. Like, if you have not watched Endgame, there's stuff in this show that you're gonna be like, "What are they talking about?" So yeah, and. Yeah, so if this is the first of these videos by me that you watch, then just to get you up to speed, I love every MCU movie. They're all in the 7 out of 10 to 10 out of 10 range, although I don't want to make any excuses for Iron Man 2. And I love every episode that's come out so far of the Disney Plus MCU shows. So, WandaVision, yeah, perfect 10 out of 10 for WandaVision, Captain America the Winter Soldier, Season 1 of Loki, Season 1 of What If, Hawkeye, Moon Knight, Miss Marvel. I will admit... Ultimately, I can't completely give this season, or this show, a 10 out of 10, but we are, again, talking, you know, no no lower than 7 out of 10, and some episodes are perfect 10 out of 10. <clears throat> there we go. And I have watched every episode twice. I watched them... Um, we, uh, yeah, weekly, I watch them, every episode I would watch as soon as I could after it premiered, and since watching the finale for the first time, I guess that was Thursday? Yeah, I have rewatched all of the episodes, and right before hitting record, I finished my second viewing of the finale. So, the plot... Jennifer Walters navigates the complicated life of a single 30-something attorney who also happens to be a green 6-foot-7-inch superpowered Hulk. And let's see... So yeah, I'm not going to get into details, but, you know, a number of episodes of this are, uh, you know, a, a case of the week. And kind of, you know, it's it's a, it really resembles a classic TV show. Very much self-contained episodes. And, you know, you have an A story and a B story. And, yeah, you know, a lot of the time, one of the stories is about, you know, it's not always, like, courtroom scenes and, like, outright, you know, uh, arguing from the prosecutor and the, the defense, uh, defense attorney. Sometimes it's, you know, we see them prepare for, uh, you know, going to trial, or they try to do things that maybe mean they won't have to go to trial for a certain case, you know, but yeah. One of the stories will be lawyering, 
and the other story will be just, you know, yeah, the life of a 30-something career woman, and yeah, you, you might be able to tell from this that this is not, like, for a long time, the MCU has been like, okay, here's, a, here's one good guy, here's, you know, sometimes there's more than one bad guy, but usually there's one central antagonist, uh, main villain. They're gonna fight either using superpowers or a superpowered, you know, suit or this is, you know, technology. And, uh, you know, yeah. Pow, bam, biff, the whole, you know, big kind of. And, yeah, Phase 4 has been moving away from that, has been experimenting more. And, yeah, this is the, this is the least action-oriented Disney Plus MCU show. And, let's see. So, so yeah. You don't you don't need to have watched everything MCU before watching this, but I would definitely say it is very good to have watched the the movies that feature the Hulk, and if, yeah, you know there's uh, yeah I guess I'll just very briefly round you know so yeah the Incredible Hulk, all four of the Avengers movies. Uh, I guess that is it. Yeah. Um. Right. And Thor Ragnarok. And the uh, let's see. Right. So. Yeah, so, uh, some of the Dis MCU Disney Plus shows have troubles handling the villain characters. You know, sometimes the villain... Uh, I guess... Yeah, sometimes the villain will show up very close to the end of the show. Uh, you know, sometimes... Yeah, the following are not always the, the case, but some of these are some of the problems. Some, some of the... Yeah aspects of the villain problem. Sometimes you have a difficult time figuring, figuring out what is the, the plan, what are they trying to accomplish. You know, much more so than many of the movies. And uh, yes, another issue is that the people who wrote the show are not always sure what you know what are the what is the villain trying to accomplish which is you know it's important if the villain is going to be a major aspect for that yeah and i suppose in some ways this show does have issues there so yeah i you know i really enjoyed and again some of them i loved the episodes on the first viewing Rewatching, knowing where it's going, even better. Like the the, if you're someone who's only watched the episodes once, and you were like, eh, I guess it's okay, consider a rewatch. You know, I'm I'm not the boss of you, but consider a rewatch if you think that, yeah, if you're passionate about the MCU. And yes, that brings us to the writing. So. Jessica Gao is the head writer and creator, and before She-Hulk Attorney at Law, there was, uh, yeah, I have to admit, I don't particularly, right, I have not watched Rick and Morty, but I see she wrote, uh, yeah, she was executive story editor on uh, six, uh, yeah, yeah executive story editor on six episodes of Rick and Morty, and she wrote one of the episodes that she's executive story editor on. And, yeah, various TV credits and, let's see, yeah, and 
the the it's it's very clear that you know this this is a show for by and about thirty something career women, and uh, you know. I guess I'm not going to give away whether it's all, but several of these women are uh, people, of, uh, women of color, and the, uh, you know, uh, yeah, as you might have guessed from the name Jessica Gao, she herself is East Asian. Now, let's see, yeah, Kevin Feige described the series as a half-hour legal comedy that would be faithful to John Byrne's take on She-Hulk in Marvel Comics. I have to admit, I have not read that much She-Hulk. Um, I really liked what I did read. I, I read the very first issue where, you know, the, the origin story. I have heard from people who really love John Byrne's run that, yeah, it is, in a lot of ways, very faithful. And, yeah, uh, you know, the, the various scenarios are, you know, interesting and, you know, being a straight cis man, I couldn't relate to everything, but I certainly see how, you know, again, 30-something career women would definitely be able to relate to a lot of what we see on this show. And the pilot is quite strong. Some people say that it's in too much of a hurry. I think it is just reflective of this is a different kind of thing, you know, and certainly I I found the, the origin, the, the pilot, to be very compelling viewing. And, uh, yeah, you know, it does a good job setting up what the show is going to be like, establishing the tone, the comedy, and I think think that is what I have to say about the pilot and the finale is excellent not everyone loves how it's handled but every overall idea and storyline is resolved and I, I suppose this is a, a fine time to get into I'm not, you know, some people have said the show does not have an overarching storyline which you know for sure you know, they're not always satisfying, but so far, all the other Disney Plus MCU shows have had an overarching storyline. And I think this is a great time to depart from that because it's. I'm glad that it took them less time with the MCU show, with the Disney Plus shows, than it did with the movies. They are breaking away from the formula, and I am here for it. The. Yeah, not necessarily an overarching story, or at least not in. Not everyone will feel that there is enough of one, but it does have an overarching theme. And this is, again, this is something I really like after watching the finale and then re watching all of it. Like, okay, I completely understand now what they were going for. And. You know, I, I tried to, I'm, I'm not going to get into spoilers in this video, but in my video where I talk about my thoughts on the f finale, I try to talk about what I felt like the it, it was, you know, heading towards, as, as much as I understood it before re-watching the, the season up to, which I think was still, you know. But, but yeah, the, the show... Yeah, some some say you know oh some of it is is filler. It really is like it's just, yeah it's just not supposed to be telling a story the way that we're used to. It's more you know it's slice of life. It's every day, you know. As as I think we can all attest to, most of us have you know, a fairly straightforward life, you know, that's for sure, some people don't, and, you know, yeah, some of them have had shows made about their struggles, but, but yeah, a lot of this is just, she's trying to balance these different aspects of her life, and, you know, yeah, the, you know, something happens to her, she becomes, you know, she, she, gains the ability to hulk out, you know, she's not permanently a hulk, and 
it really changes her life and she's she, you know she tries to figure out how to integrate this new part of her in a way that doesn't completely derail what she's been, you know she's she's in her 30s and like when the when the season starts she's like working at the DA's office and i forget the exact wording but it's something you know she is um, what's the word? She's she's headed for a, you know, things are going well. She might be getting a promotion soon, and this Hulk thing happens, and she doesn't want to just give up this life she's worked for, and that's, you know, that is one of the things where this is very different from uh, the other shows, uh, the other MCU stories in general. You know, a lot of them are like. You know, this is my life now. You know, I am I am a superhero now, and I would definitely say that it is intentional that the first MCU. I don't know for sure about Marvel, Marvel Netflix, Netflix Marvel. I've, I've, yeah, but certainly of the MCU movies and MCU Disney Plus shows, you know, I am watching Netflix Marvel. Finally, it's on Disney Plus now. I don't have to get Netflix for it. The, you know, yeah. For the MCU movies, for the MCU Disney Plus shows, this is a different take, and I think it is very much intentional that it is... It is the story... It's, it's the first of these to center a 30-something career women, woman of color and... Yeah, you know, again, I can only, you know, I base this on what I've heard women say. But, yeah, traditionally, you know, a, a series of people who have not been in charge of their own narrative, who uh, in control of their own narrative, who have had other people, you know, giving very biased stories about them, a short list. Women, women in their 30s, people of color, professional women, you know, women who, like, she went to college, she, she's worked for this, she's not, you know, this is, you know, if, if the, if the story had been made, I guess, tw ah, yeah, if the story had been made some decades ago, it would be about, she doesn't want to be a housewife, you know, it, it, it you know, in this, it, it it's not really that. Oh, is she going to be a housewife? No, no, no. It's going. Is she going to be? Is she going to stick with lawyering, or you know, how much is the Hulk aspect of her going to change? Yeah, take charge, and yeah, you know, that is, I suppose, a a real life non superpowered equivalent might be like. Ah, yeah, this is going to sound very stereotypical, but perhaps, you know, becoming pregnant, or maybe there is some situation that forces you to move to, you know, maybe, you know, a different state, uh, you know, these kinds of things, and, you know, obviously, since it's a sitcom, some of this stuff is very, very goofy and outlandish, but yeah, again, uh, you know, women have you know, women viewers of the show have expressed this is, you know, this is what it's like. This is what it's like when suddenly something happens to you that's really inconvenient and you have to try to figure out how to make your life work when there is this, yeah. And... Let's see. So, yeah. Um... I can't comment that much on how this is an, as an adaptation, but I do know a little. So, basically, it does take some of the major elements. You know, some characters will show up, and some aspects, such as the fourth wall breaking, uh, you know, yeah, are, are significant here. And let's see. So, so yeah, there's not necessarily a, a huge amount of use of superpowers, 
especially by She-Hulk, but it does use them very well, and it is easy to follow. <clears throat> and that brings us to the direction. So, Cat Quiro directed six episodes, and also, you know, she has a career in TV. Let's see, she has, yeah, 17 different, um, I guess, shows, including Brooklyn Nine-Nine, also a workplace comedy. And... Let's see. Yeah, in addition to being a director, she's also an executive producer, which, yeah, by now we realize that is pretty significant. Oh, she, let's see, she was on Charmed and Law and Order, yeah. Another director is Anu Valia, who has 10 credits as a TV producer. And, uh, let's see, 20 credits as TV for, for directing TV. And... So I've, uh, I have to admit, I forget exactly who this is. I believe it's one of the directors who said that the characters who come over from other shows and movies are made to fit the tone of this show. It's not Saving the World, it's Slice of Life. And I found that to really, really work. I, I understand some people were frustrated. I think it's important to remember this is not a new status quo. This is one particular show. <coughs> If She-Hulk is a major part of a movie, maybe that one will also have, but that doesn't mean that all of these characters are going to be like this from now on without, you know, yeah. And parts of the show, the ones that she didn't dislike for good reason, really resonated with transgender critic Jesse Gender, who's here on YouTube, like I am, and I find it hard to express in words how happy that makes me here. I've long felt that the transgender community deserve this kind of representation, since they face so much undeserved hatred. I'm not going to say that there is enough representation for any marginalized group, since I don't belong to any of them, but before this show, there really wasn't representation for trans people in the MCU, and... I would argue they were the very last group to get it. The, the I, I am willing to hear counter arguments from fellow progressives. Not everything about the show works, but if you give it enough time, by the end, the show has delivered on just about everything that we hope for based on the comics, based on the MCU. So this show did definitely alienate and upset a number of conservative male fans who clearly felt it was very hostile towards them. But that's not the only great thing about the show. So yeah, to be sure, there are very negative depictions of men on the show, but the MCU has always had evil men. Men in the leads who were very flawed. Not saying those are the same thing. Now the male villains are evil because of the way they treat women and the flawed lead is a woman. Also, the show does feature some evil women and I'd say there's at least half a dozen you know, women characters on this show that come off badly in various ways, not always evil, and over half a dozen you know, good men, positive depictions of men. The show, the show features women to emulate and men to emulate. A lot of characters that we love to hate, not all of them get much screen time, re representing different aspects of toxic masculinity. And I just want to say, the actors who do the, you know, they are spot on. Like, they just, like, they they really are completely convincing when this is the kind of, you know this could easily get kind of ridiculous, and I realize some people would argue that it does, 
but they they make it feel like it at least belongs in this world, which I think also some people are like, you know, this is a comedy. Like, comedies, you know, it's a sitcom. The, there's a lot of broad comedy, a lot of stereotyping in sitcoms, and this is not the first sitcom to have, you know, toxic males. So I've read a number of reviews. Some people are using the term feminism as, as if that is automatically a negative. I mean, if you don't understand how feminism is a positive force, and not only for women, I realize some men are like, you know, why aren't we helping all people? It does help men as well. If you don't see that, you know, I mean, I'm going to make some arguments here, but otherwise, yeah, this is not a show for you, and I don't know why you would think it would be, like, what what in the marketing or, like, just, yeah, I, I don't know why you would think that this was, yeah. And, uh, yeah, you know, some of these, you know, feminism, uh, women should stop blaming men for their own problems, as if the power isn't still largely in the hands of men, and thus it does make sense when we feminists ask men to stop blaming women for their own problems, and claiming the show features misandry. This is an attempt by misogynists to hijack the discussion of misogyny. Currently, the system defends misogynists and attacks survivors, and as such, yes, we need feminism. This show is not saying that men should be treated badly the way that misogyny is saying that about women. It is not misandrist. It is anti-misogynist. It does not hate all men. It depicts misogynist bad behavior and criticizes it. I have to say, if you watch this show and you feel like you're being targeted, I mean, if you don't already realize you're a misogynist, maybe think about like. So, I, I already mentioned, I've watched every episode of this twice now. I never felt like the show was saying that I was a bad person. You know, I, I'm not saying I'm perfect. I try to be an ally. But none of the misogyny on the show, like, I, I never felt like, oh, wow, this really hates me. I'm not saying there's no media that, you know... Yeah, that, that does hate men and think that men are just terrible. And I don't really know why that's supposed to be a negative by itself. Like, uh, yeah. Anyway, that is not this show. And, uh, yeah, so, anti-misogyny. As such, it does not meet the criteria for propaganda that some are alleging. I completely disagree with the reading that says that the show is accusing every viewer critical of the show of misogyny. What it's saying is that misogynists are a very real threat. There are characters on this show, there are men on this show that tell Jennifer, maybe you should try this instead of what you're doing now and you know she might at first be reluctant but it you know that there is sometimes like it's saying that all people can help each other you know it is not saying that all men are are evil now let's see and, and it's also like her father appears Ah, uh, let's see, what was the first episode? Or very early in the season, certainly. He's very clearly a positive. Episode 2, I'm almost certain, yeah. Episode 2 has her father. Like, if if you only watch the, the pilot, I will grant there are not very many positive depictions of men in that, although I would definitely argue that... Yeah, it's not really a, a spoiler to, to say. The, the... Yeah. Bruce Banner slash Smart Hulk does make an appearance in the pilot. And he does try to, you know... He has a certain idea of what 
Jennifer needs to for for this to go well. And no, yeah, not all of that is something she's very happy to hear. But the show isn't saying that everything he's saying is wrong or misogynistic. I, actually, I'm not sure. Is there a single thing that the show's explicitly saying he says or does in the pilot that is misogynistic? I, ca I can't think of a single thing. Like, you know, at most, like, maybe microaggressions. And there's some, like, some of the time he isn't extremely mature, but he doesn't, like, do something just, yeah, straight-up misogynistic. You know, I, th I think a lot of people really, really glommed on to the first male character that is introduced in the show is very misogynistic. And I feel like that's something that a lot of men were like, oh, I'm, I'm not like that. And instead of just being like, and that's why this isn't targeted. I'm not being attacked here. What the show is saying is I should try to help women. You know, I, if I know a misogynist, maybe I try to change his mind. It is very sad to see so many reviews by misogynists so hostile to the idea of a show that asks the viewer to empathize with women and criticizing some male behavior. After over a hundred years of filmed entertainment with widespread misogyny criticizing all women. Note I said widespread, meaning not saying it's every single movie or show. And so many of the misogynistic depictions of women in male-centered movies and shows have been cartoonish, painting women as useless, evil, the source of all men's failure, etc. To be clear, there's nothing wrong with criticizing the show. It's not perfect. I'm saying that, you know, I'm, I guess I'm, I'm not sure I've, it, yeah, I've, I have already in this video made a few criticisms, but so many of the user reviews are misogynistic. And, you know, an example of a critic that I would personally say is barely misogynistic, but again, you know, if you are a progressive, especially if you are a woman, I'm willing to hear counter arguments, would be Sean Chandler talks about. I don't necessarily agree with the points he makes, but most of them are not misogynistic. He's approaching the show as an MCU Disney Plus show, not as something not allowed to criticize misogyny. He points out some of the positive aspects of the show, not worried he'll be called woke. You know, he is one of the critics to, for example, point out how great Tatiana Maslany is, which I'm not sure I've seen a single misogynist do. <clears throat> because it doesn't fit their narrative. So, this show is definitely more mature than most MCU outings. I will say, you know, some of the Netflix ones, at least in some ways, you know, this is more mature and others not quite as much, and in order to avoid spoilers, I won't get into which. So, yeah, as mentioned, this is a show by, for, and about 30-something career women. So it gets into topics that that exact group of people deal with and are interested in stories dealing with. You know, since she's a lawyer, you have stories about that. She takes her career seriously. There's some satire, to, you know, we see her go on dates arranged via dating apps, you know, which explicitly points out some of the issues with dating in the era of dating apps. She tries to find a balance between work life and personal life. You know, it explores media, you know, how, how media covers stories feeling... Ah. Centering prominent women. There's alcohol, sex, family dinners, body issues, both good and bad. Good, taking some pride and joy in her new look. Bad, people judging her for her now unusual body. Therapy, you know, not all of these all at once, mind you, but yeah. You know, it, it very much, there's there's a lot of lived experience reflected on this show. And yeah, so the, the meta fourth wall break element starts out small, develops over the course of it, and is excellent 
I will acknowledge some people did think it was mishandled. I respectfully disagree. I, I suppose, uh, yeah, I don't love every single fourth wall break, but overall, I thought it was really well handled. Eight out of ten. I loved the element in the two Deadpool movies. I have not watched Once Upon a Deadpool. I'd like to, but, you know, short theatrical run, I didn't get, yeah. I personally think that this show uses the element even better than those movies. And... Yeah, the, there's a great variety on the show to the types of problems caused by and or experienced by people with superpowers. And they managed to work in more than half a dozen, like, Marvel characters who are... <sighs> when they debuted, they were perhaps seen as, you know, wow, that's an interesting idea. But, you know, by today's standards, they seem somewhat silly and there's some great contrasting between the the kind of super aspect of the MCU and the mundane of lawyering and a normal life with dating apps and such some people feel that it was unfocused I would say if you want you know yeah once you have right if you rewatch the whole season there's a lot of setup and payoff and foreshadowing and again like I didn't fully realize all of it th on my first viewing but you know, it's also just we we gotta readjust. We we gotta be open to new new stories, new ways of telling stories. You know, we we have way too much today of of this. That well, you know, for a while we got this, so we can't suddenly do that. No, it's more interesting this way. And the the yeah, you know. This is this is different for an MCU Disney Plus show, and I think it is for the better. I hope they keep experimenting. Once again, I love the MCU, but wow, that is there's a lot of similarity between what, what are we up to now? Thirty movies, you know. I could sit down and rewatch any of them, but like, there's a lot of similarities between them. They're not that eager to take chances. Especially once Disney acquired control. And I'm not some sort of anti-Disney person, but, you know, large corp corporation, they really want to take chances. They don't really want to take chances. And, you know, back when it was more in the hands of, like, you know, the, the Marvel Studios, that was, like, untried. So it was like, well, I don't know, let's try this, I guess. And... It led to some really interesting, you know, we're, we're talking phase one, basically. I, I believe it was by the end of phase one that Disney acquired, or maybe early phase two, so, you know. Some of the comedy is intentionally cringe, and I would definitely say none of the cringe I felt was unintentional on the part of the show. And, you know, I am someone who usually does not like that type of comedy, but I did not feel like it was excessive. And and again, you know, yeah, you know, thirty something women of color, career women of color. Yeah, you know, sometimes they encounter situations in real life where it's like, oh, really this? So it just it makes sense to have that in a show by for and about them. I cannot compare this show to Ally McBeal. I watched very little of that, and I only watched it back when it was on the air. I have not watched it since, so yeah. And I realize, you know, some people say, ah, oh, this joke's wage-related. It should have been made back when Ally McBeal. I, I respectfully disagree. I, I think the show is modern enough that it makes sense to make it today. And yeah, so, quoting some fellow critics. The show is very much a sitcom, the most stylistically unique MCU Disney Plus show since WandaVision. And yeah, like, the, you know, you have bright colors and like, it just, yeah. And uh, yeah, some do say too many jokes don't land. And since it is so focused on being funny, that is a problem. Some people say that the jokes are too, uh, I believe the word's telegraphed. And uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, still quoting quoting critics. I love that this is about what happens between the big superhero movies, what people think about Steve Rogers outside of when he saved the world. 
The show has some fun with the legal troubles that would realistically come up if MCU stuff happened in the real world. Big, bright, colorful. Ideally, a show billed as Marvel's first out-and-out -out comedy would be notably, notably funnier than, say, Hawkeye. Some inconsistent tone. Sex in the City. And, yeah, like, I, I'm not sure... I think every single person I've seen, you know, compared to Sex in the City, has done so negatively. I don't really like. I would agree. I, I haven't watched. Ah, what was it called again? The the new one, the, the one without Kim Cattrall. If it was, if this was like that, but as far as I'm, you know, I've watched like uh, the take videos on that show. It really doesn't seem like you know, this and that have that much, you know, and this isn't, like, The Take also did, you know, other videos on Sex and the City, and they made, you know, they made one of their toxic takeaway videos on Sex and the City, and I, you know, went through a couple of those points, and it's like, wow, yeah, none of that is in this show, so, you know, because, because that would be, like, I, I agree if it was, you know, I mean, the the show was in some ways progressive for its time, but it a lot has changed in in media, thankfully. And yeah, I I don't, I mean, yeah, it's it's once again, it's for like career women. Why is that a problem for something, you know, for for something like that to be very Sex in the City? I I don't really, yeah, you know, in some ways you could say this is like. If if Sex in the City had Sex in the City with the MCU, this would be their love child, and yeah, like I I, just, I feel like that makes a lot of sense. And you know, what one of the things was I've I've heard people criticize about Sex in the City is the ah uh, let's see I think it was called post feminism in the in the two thousands you'd have all this fiction that you know, starred women, and it was supposed to be about women's lives, but it's so much about, oh, you know, will they find a guy, and that kind of thing, and, I mean, I would definitely say a lot of this show is really not about that, it's, you know, it's her dealing with her sometimes frustrating family, you know, she goes to family dinners, it's her dealing with her job, and the, you know, the stress of that, and then, you know, people's expectations of her in the workplace, these kinds of things. Like, yeah, there is some of this sort of, you know, her going on dates and, you know, being interested in men. But it's not really the main focus, at least I would argue, again, willing to hear out, you know, female progressives. I... Yeah, let's see. Yeah, so, another fellow critic. 10 out of 10 for first episode. I see male reviewers bombing this as woke trash. Notice I used, he you know, heavy air quotes. Well, I, for one, am tired of a one-sided male testosterone world. I very much want a world where brains balance with physical competence. She-Hulk, like Gal Gadot Wonder Woman, is one of few places in pop culture where a healthy balance is celebrated in a fun way. Congrats to all who created this. A creative wonder with both heart and humor. And only 5 out of 25 users found this helpful, which to me sounds like 20 people just did not agree i i feel like that's a that's a helpful review i mean if you don't like the what he's describing don't watch the show kind of the, the definition of a helpful review anyway the character dynamics i.e. getting to see jen's interactions with her father are charming and really hook me as a fan of 2000s pop culture juggernauts like Mean Girls, I get the vibe. It's irreverent and messy, and I love it for me. And that brings us to the characters. So, yes, Tatiana Maslany plays Jennifer Walters slash She-Hulk. And, yeah, you know, I found her very easy to empathize with. 
you know, she's intelligent and driven, but also struggles with not feeling like she's good enough. She can be neurotic, you know, not doesn't always stand up for herself. And, you know, BFF Nikki helps out with that a lot. Jen has a sense of humor. She can enjoy herself and celebrate when things go well. You know, that, that was one of the things that, um, you know, some, some female characters, especially leads, have been criticized. Yeah, oh, you know, she there's never any fun. She's always so serious. I've seen some people say that they think it is wrong that Jen is not a role model, that young women should not try to be like her. I agree that she doesn't start out like that, but she grows over the course of the show. And I also don't think that this is necessarily that much about providing a role model. I mean, if you want an MCU-based super-powered role model for young women, you know, you have Captain Marvel, you have Ms. Marvel, you know, character and movie slash show. I think the idea here is for young women to recognize themselves in Jen. It's saying, you're not alone in being neurotic. There's nothing wrong with relying on your friends for confidence. If you need therapy, a mental health break, that's okay. And that's something that women for so long, they've been told the opposite. Now, let's, you know, for example, this things with friends, you know, there's a lot of male-centered movies where, like, the friend of the woman that the male lead is attracted to is, like, an antagonist, like, he has to find some way to get her out, you know, distract, you know, have someone distract her, or, like, find a way to talk to the, the female, you know, the, the, yeah, the, the potential partner when she's alone, and it's like, do you, do you realize how predatory that seems? Like, part of the reason that women often pair up when they, you know, go out to party and su such, is because of predatory behavior by men. Now, yeah, so, again, critic quotes. Tatiana Maslany has great screen presence and a lot of charisma. She has great chemistry with the people they pair her up with. I especially like when she's paired up with Nikki, her paralegal. I 100% agree. She is so charming and charismatic and you just you want to spend more time with her you want to get to know her and just yeah you know like if jennifer walters existed in real life i'd want to be friends with her and let's see and you know some some people have said she really carries the show and yeah and, right, She-Hulk isn't trying to be a hero, and in fact, the fame bothers her. She's just trying to be a good lawyer. The effects on her as She-Hulk are, you know, not always great, but her face, and thus her acting, always comes through, and this was the right choice. And I will talk about, you know, it's not like, I really hate when conservatives say, oh, you know, the, the lazy that the effects are so bad. No, it's crunch, it's a lack of a strong union, you know, effects people are ridiculously overworked, and it's pretty messed up that, you know, conservatives ignore the very real problems with this entire group of people because it suits their narrative. You know, I would actually, I would not mind if they said, you know, the effects are bad, Marvel has to stop treating animators so badly and forcing them to, to rush through these things, you know. Now, you know, maybe some conservatives do, but I have not come across them. And... Yeah, I really love how unashamedly the show is about a woman, primarily for women. She worries about things that we have not seen the MCU men worry about. Catcalling, mansplaining, shoes, clothes. And Jen is confident, comfortable with her sexuality, sarcastic, career-oriented. And yeah, you know, 
we do again have an MCU Disney Plus show that rushes through the origin story. Personally, I really don't mind that uh, there's an aspect of the origin story that they released, you know, changed up, and I think it was a good idea. And I know some people believe that if a woman expresses her sexuality, it must mean that it's for the straight male audience. Many times, yes. But I really don't think it's a universal truth, and I really don't think it's the case here. The camera does not ogle her. The characters who treat her like a sex object are clearly in the wrong, and we wind up really laughing at them. She's not asexual, not that there's anything wrong with that. Just, yeah. You know, again, you know, 30 something, like she literally, at one point, she literally says, A woman has needs. And. Yeah, you know, I find it really interesting to finally have in the MCU a career oriented young woman who is not a spy, an assassin, or soldier, something like that, you know. Now, uh, let's see. Right. Um, some conservatives have claimed that She-Hulk is the type of character that starts out flawless. She doesn't have an arc. It's just waiting for everyone else to realize how perfect she is. You know, s some episodes of the show does a really good job underlining, you know, she can be quite a pushover. She, she really lacks confidence. Now, uh, Jamila Jamil plays Titania. And I suppose, I'm not sure I'm going to get that much into what What I will say is she is a super-powered influencer. So they are exploring, you know, female influencers. And, you know, some, some people have said there's too little of the character. And I definitely will say I was surprised that she wasn't in it more. I, th I think essentially, you know... And I think this is in part because of the marketing. She was kind of misunderstood as being the main villain. And ultimately, that's not quite the case. Ginger Gonzaga plays Nikki, Walter's best friend. She is immensely funny, whether on her own or sharing scenes with Jen or a third option. And just, yeah, incredibly funny. Like... I would watch a spin-off where she is the lead. Like, I, w I would watch a spin-off that is, like, exclusively about her. Uh, you know, yeah. It, she's, she's incredibly funny, and I have got to see her in other stuff. I, I have to admit, most of the, the new cast in this, I'm not very familiar with. You know, a lot of them are from TV. I do not watch a lot of current TV. And Tim Roth as Emil Blonsky slash The Abomination also, you know, appears in this. And yeah, I, I thought it was very interesting. You know, in the Incredible Hulk movie, he's mostly just acting really intense and like in pain and such. And it's, it's cool. It works for the movie. But here he gets more dimension to him. And I really appreciate that. And, yeah, you know, we actually see what happens with a villain after their big, like, villain, you know, after they did the supervillain thing, after people saw them be, you know, do, doing evil. And that's, again, that's not really something we have seen very much of in the MCU, when really, that's where you can really get complex with a villain character is... What happens when they've lost, and it's like, you know, what, what now, you know? And it is really cool, because, you know, a lot of MCU villains die the first time they, the, you know, whether it's a movie or a show, the first time they make a big appearance, you know, they, they might not die in the first episode of the show, but by the end of that show's run, or that season, and... Yeah, Mark Ruffalo returns as Bruce Banner slash Smart Hulk, and yeah, I really like this take on the character. It really didn't feel... I, I know some people really hate how this handles the character, but yeah, I, I thought it really worked. 
and Benedict Wong as Wong, the Sorcerer Supreme. And yeah, you know, all of them are really, really funny in this. Right, and Josh Segara plays Augustus Pug Pugliese. He really comes through for his friends. He's a, he's a really good guy. You know, th there's an example of a male character in this show who is decidedly positive, you know, a really positive depiction. Uh, you know, it, yeah, when I say he really comes through for his friends, especially his female friends, you know, his, his colleagues and such. And just, yeah, you know, and, and again, so unbelievably funny. And when, when he first appeared, I wasn't sure how much he was going to be in the show. I'm really glad he is in as much of the show as he is because, just, yeah. And I think I will leave it at that about the, the various characters. Now, diver you know, so, yeah. Right. Um, there is also the fellow female lawyer. I gotta, st I gotta get into the habit of copying in the Wikipedia stuff once the show starts airing. Renee Elise Goldberry plays Mallory Book, fellow female lawyer of color and yeah she's she's great you know very business oriented very much like you know yeah and yeah i i really appreciated how they 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 did a really great job with these different cuz you know she's a very different person than jen is and let's see. I guess that will yeah I will just very briefly say you know one of the one of the examples of toxic masculinity is Dennis Bukowski as played by Drew Matthews and like seriously he does such a good job like you just hate this guy and yeah just like they 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 manage to really he, he feels like a real person, sadly. And, oh, right, and Steve Coulter plays Holden Holloway. And I suppose I shouldn't give away exactly, but he's, he's a very important figure in the overall story. And... Yes, that is the ones I will get into. So, but but yeah, pretty good di diversity, uh, right? If you have not, if you're not familiar with them, you might not know. But Tatiana Maslany and Ginger Gonzaga and Jamila Jamil are women of color. Now, yeah, diversity in casting is one thing. You know, sometimes these pieces of media don't really understand the unique perspectives of its minority characters. And yeah, I would say, like, some of the time, like, Ms. Marvel was a show where if you, if, if, um, if Kamala Khan was not an East Asian uh, uh, crap. I am it's I swear it's not a race thing I am just bad at geography Kamala Khan uh, right yeah um, yeah Pakistani American Muslim if she were not Pakistani American, Muslim, New Jersey, you know, teenage girl. If you changed one of those aspects, you'd have to rewrite a huge chunk of the show. It it is legitimately it is about her as you know her experience. 
and ultimately, like, I mean, in, in the comics, Jennifer Walters is white, and the fact that she's being played by a non-white actress doesn't change that much, you know, and, and she's also, you know, it's also one of these things of, you know, she's, she could pass for white, you know, j just about. She's, she's not very dark-skinned, and... You know, yeah, Ginger Gonzaga is Latina, and there's definitely some of that in the performance, but yeah, ultimately not a huge, and let's see, Mallory Book, also not that much, and that, yeah, I, I really do wish that they had, that, that is something where I, I wish, you know, it's, it's Disney, Baby Steps. But it, it would have been really cool, you know, I, that's the thing, like, Kamala Khan, the, the Ms. Marvel show, in a lot of ways, was very MCU, you know, the, it's less action, and some people were frustrated with how much cultural stuff there was, in it and how much time was devoted to the cultural stuff when, you know, we were used to that time going to plot. But other than that, yeah, by and large, it was very typical MCU. That's maybe why they were able to get away with diving so deep into her very specific identity, whereas this show is very not like the MCU. And so we have, you know, yeah, if, if the lead was just a, a white woman, you wouldn't really have to change much. And I, yeah, I, I do wish. Now, let's see, and and yeah, you know, I don't I don't blame the creatives behind the show. I blame Disney and its unwillingness to to take very many chances. You know, but yeah, um, a lot of the time they weren't really trying to explore how the 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 fact that these are women of color, how that affects the the way that they are perceived. Now, let's see. To be fair, one aspect is that uh, Jennifer expresses that, you know, she is worried that, you know, people will see her as, you know, oh, she's just an angry woman. But she just says woman, she doesn't say, you know, I don't want to be seen as an angry black woman, which, again, like, if you sit down and look at all the movies where the black people are just constantly angry and they can't control their sexual urges and all this stuff, like, it is just more diversity, please. We, we really have got to get away from, from that kind of, yeah. The dialogue is quite good. The, the various characters each have their own voice. And there are a lot of funny lines. You know, a, a lot of the comedy is verbal, but there is also some uh, physical comedy. Now, the... Let's see. So. Right. Um, I guess... Right. So. I am just really quickly, swe I swear this is not going to take forever for me to find the, actually, come to think of it, um, did I accidentally mix this up? I did indeed, okay. Right, so the cinematography was, uh, there we go, yes, there's some very impressive cinematography, you know, considering it's a sitcom, although, you know, modern sitcom, so maybe that's why, they could have gone multi-camera setup like they did with some episodes of WandaVision, I think that would have been a mistake for this show, you know, it wasn't on WandaVision, but, yeah, I, I really appreciate that, you know, if, if, um, this is closer to something like Malcolm in the Middle, 
than like uh let's see the nanny for example you know also a sort of you know story centered on this young woman and her career situation and the editing was you know by and large really really good and some really great editing for jokes which is very important for filmed comedy you know other than the the sitcom multi-camera setup and let's see yeah so the action this is very much not an action show sometimes a lot of screen time passes without any it is not completely without action scenes but it's really not about them some people have said that the ones there are are really not very impressive I suppose that's true for a number of them I think it is worth noting it really was not the point of the show there is perhaps a sense of obligation to them uh, I, th I think it's you know the show is at its best when it basically isn't doing them at all or, or if it's like just for comedy's sake and you know just focuses on what it is clearly more interested in. again you know there are only so many chances they're allowed to take but I, I think it would be really cool if this show was basically just the 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 comedy and the occasional you know and yeah again when they do action you know make it funny because they do some of the time but yeah you know some chases on foot some physical fights and use of superpowers now the score for this is is quite good the you know basically the music boils down to score for the very dramatic moments and licensed pop and rap songs some recent some 90s some 2000s very frequently by female artists who have done well for success celebration etc the situations on the show of success celebration etc you know basically the kind of music that Jen listens to and that brings us yeah, so I am not going to give away who the main villain is, but I think they did a great job on it, and yeah, like, um, I guess this is probably one of the best villains in an MCU Disney Plus show. And the sound design is great, because, you know, you do have stuff that, you know, for example, the hulking out you know where like especially because a lot of the hulking out they they don't tend to have the camera on Tatiana Maslany they they tend to or or only at the very start of the very end of the of the transformation you know so yeah it is very important which again it's a way to you know that is more difficult for the animators than she hulk walking around and you know the yeah and yeah, the sound design does make it very clear. Like I, I can't imagine anyone would watch this and be like, "When did she turn into?" You know, you can always hear the the transformation. And it does the the show does struggle with pacing, going back and forth between a very natural pace, one that is overly fast. And one that's perhaps a tad slow, and I don't mean like, oh, it's, you know, it's letting a situation play out, it's it's resting in the... There are times where it just, like, it's, it's a little bit too slow. Now, let's see... Uh, right, and a critic quote, The roughly 30-minute episodes are tightly, even over, packed, but the try-anything spirit works as a welcome... Song. Solemnity antidote. She Hulk, so far, so good. And yeah, so roughly 30 minutes per episode, and you know, at least so far, only one season, and nine episodes to the season. So, 
And I would say the it, it uses its time well again. You know, the the rewatching it and you know, realizing what it's building up to and where it really what it wants to focus on. I really appreciate how much they actually did, you know, where on the first, I, I, you know, I do have to admit, I'm not as familiar with movies and shows made specifically for women. I'm not completely unfamiliar, you know, Charmed, Sex and the City, yeah, but the, the yeah, you know, some of them have a, you know, they're not as fast-paced as shows made more with with male viewers in mind you know and yeah you know it's it's perhaps also something you see in movies like pretty woman legally blonde so yeah you know it's it's not as focused on something has to constantly be happening you know sometimes it just lets something breathe and lets us appreciate the the atmosphere the the situation now let's see the yeah so the best element is how different this is and its specific focus uh, you know again like basically i'm i'm still really hoping that we get a specific like trans show and I feel like it's such a gimme for a super like let's say that it's a male to female trans person have them be born male and for a while they're living as you know as, as a boy as a man and they feel like something's wrong and then one day they get superpowers the superpowers mean the transition into female and they feel much more comfortable as that and you know that I don't know if uh, if at that point you should have them transition back to male I I realize that is something that is very upsetting to, to even imagine for many trans people I, I yeah I suppose it should maybe be that once they have transitioned they stay that same gender and maybe you know yeah, like, you know, superpowers, but not everything they do is about super. Again, I have to, you know, I'm going off what I've heard trans people express. If there are trans people watching this and you're like, you know, wow, this guy is totally off base, please let me know. Now, but, but yeah, you know, I, I do really, really love that we have something that is so specifically for this you know this yeah this very specific group of of people and yeah you know i i understand people who say that it's frustrating that it's so specific when it is mcu it's not it you know i i mean if you really really don't want to watch it the stuff you need to know will be on Wikipedia, you know, if you just cannot get through it. And, once again, I'm not saying that only misogynists hate the show. Now, yeah, I, I suppose the worst aspect is probably the, the CG. And again, I'm not saying that as like, oh, they just didn't feel like bothering. No, it, they are overworked, underpaid, yeah. Now, yeah, so a couple of things that I saw people say was what they, right, and I ultimately don't think it's that big of a deal. You know, I, I try to challenge myself to think of something bad, even about stuff that I really, really like. Yeah, so a couple of the things that I saw other people say were you know, were something that really bothered them about the show. Some people didn't think it was funny enough. A number of people said that, you know, it was not what was expected, which I I, I realized that that can be a bad thing, but we really got to get to a place where that is not automatically seen as a bad thing. 
and uh, not everything from the source material is in the adaptation and some people felt that it was downright a bad adaptation and again I have not read enough She-Hulk to say for sure but I do see a number of fans saying this is exactly what they wanted out of it so I was most worried if they could get the character and tone right again you know with it being so different and and there's definitely some MCU straining going on like you can this would have been a very different show if it wasn't you know I'm I'm not sure this should have been like Netflix Marvel cuz those are much darker where that that's not what this is you know that's not what this is supposed to be it's not about someone like barely managing to keep a, a terrible situation together it's it's slice of life but yeah if if it wasn't disney if it was allowed to be more what it's supposed to be but you know at the same time it does get some really great stuff out of being in the mcu i there are some characters in this that i never thought we'd actually see in live action and i love how they handle them and yeah, I was most looking forward to seeing this really interesting character in live action. And I really do feel like they did a great job, like, using the differences between the mediums. Uh, you know, the, the fourth wall breaks are very different in, in some ways than the comic, and that's because those are just two very different mediums, and I thought they did an excellent job. So... The season one, in case there are more than one season later, opener, the pilot, is great, the finale is excellent, and the overall season is quite, yeah, it is great. So the trailers do give at least a little bit too much away, but, you know, some of what is in the trailers do give you a really good idea of what the show is like. And the cover and poster do not give too much away. And it is actually, like, I think there's basically two... Oh, yeah, there, there are character-specific posters. But other than that, you know, you have the... Yeah, you know, there's, there's like, a an ad saying superheroes need a super lawyer call today and the number for, for She-Hulk, and it's a, um, what are the, uh, let's, oh, no, never mind, and there is, okay, there's one where she's balancing on a giant high heel, I'm not sure I really, that makes me think of the, the show that much, anyway, there's one where she is sitting on a completely green bench with a green ad for her and that's the same you know superheroes need a super lawyer and then we have the one where she is just you know walking in high heels up the steps to uh, a courtroom and you know yeah you see her legs very clearly green but she's got like a work bag you know it doesn't look like she's about to go be a superhero it looks like oh She's she has a job. She might be a She-Hulk, but she has a job. And yes, so on Rotten Tomatoes, the um critic scores it uh, there we go is eighty seven percent, which makes it certified fresh. Uh, let's see, um, it, is it not going to tell me how many reviews that's based on? Here we go, 565 critic reviews. Only 73 of them are rotten. The average rating is 7 out of 10, but the audience score is only 35%, the average rating being 2.3 stars out of 5, based on 15,567 ratings. And again, I'm not saying they're all misogynists. I do think... Yeah, ultimately, 
it makes more sense to talk about when I talk about the IMDB score and also the the Metacritic since you know on Rotten Tomatoes at the end of the day it's you know it's it's yes or no it's it's an upvote or a downvote it doesn't mean that every single person who you know that yeah anyway on Metacritic it has a 67 out of 100 based on 26 critic reviews 17 are positive 8 are mixed and one is negative and the yes the Metacritic user rating is 2.4 out of 10 based on 635 ratings 118 positive 30 mixed 487 negative and let's see okay uh, it appears that if you vote yes if you if you rate it 0 1 2 or 3 it reads as a negative review mixed is 4 and up to something and positive is really high that kind of shows that this is a very negatively received show by many viewers and again I'm not saying they're all misogynists I do think that a number of these people you know I, I didn't read every single review but I read a bunch of them and it's just you know a bunch of them are it wasn't what I expected or it hates all men which as I said it doesn't you know it, yeah I mean nobody wants to be hated I get it I get that if you think you know I mean I hate ah let's see national security I will admit it has been a while but when I watched it I felt like wow this movie hates black people I hate the movie Saving Silverman because that is definitely a misogynistic movie that is a movie that hates women like it is just so utterly like it's it's yeah you know you, you know how you watch a movie and then afterwards you just you know okay I'm not going there anyway I was gonna make a gross out joke I don't want to do a gross out joke in this video I hate those movies I think they're terrible not you know it's not because I feel like they hate me but yeah I get you know feeling offended and a number of these people were clearly offended by a show or movie that hates a certain group of people I 100 percent understand that I just think that a lot of people have bought into a false narrative and I mean ultimately the the part of the problem is you know I don't particularly want to send viewers his way but people like the critical drinker and I feel like uh, a lot has been done to combat the the narrative that people like him I'm not saying he's the only one but you know grifters conservative grifters on YouTube who peddle hatred to, to you know so that a bunch of misogynists don't have to feel bad that they're being you know as as misogynistic behavior is being called out in you know not only in in fiction but also you know by real you know big personalities and yeah a lot has been done to combat the narrative by people like organized chaos and I um, Nando V movies also did at least one video on this and yeah they both do such a great job yeah you know yeah I, I feel like if I'll if people tried to you know the the people who didn't watch their videos and just watched the show and and like who don't have a negative opinion of feminism as just a you know like I'm not saying look I hate turfs 
you know, for, for those not familiar, trans-exclusionary exclusionary radical feminists, I'm not saying all feminists are, are saints or are perfect people, but, you know, so yeah, you, you see these conservative YouTubers back up TERFs. So it's not, you know, that they found feminists they like. If you try to watch this show, you know, without that in the back of your mind, without that filter and bias, you know, you might not love the show, but like giving it between a zero and a three out of ten, like, you know, I actually, yeah, I, I kept going back and forth on whether I was going to bring this up, and I'm, I'm going to bring it up. Apparently, this is on, on, ah, uh, Rotten Tomatoes. On Rotten Tomatoes, this has a lower audience score than Inhumans does. Let me check if that's... Yeah, Inhumans has a 43% average audience score. And, you know, some people pointed to that... Some, yeah, some conservatives pointed to that saying, See? It's that bad. And some progressives pointed to that and said, see, that's how hated it is without people really, like, engaging with it and actually looking at... I don't think it would be the worst thing in the world if the show did hate all men. I think it would be worse if it was actually a minority. But the idea that, you know, but again... It hates misogyny. The idea that it is worse than in humans. I I will admit I have not watched in humans. I, I might at some point. What I've heard about in humans, there's no way that in humans is a better show than She-Hulk. It is just a less hated one. And I wonder why that is. Could it be because the lead is still a white man who has power? I don't know. I just, you know, because that one, like, I don't know a single person who can, can, like, that show has worse CG than She-Hulk. And that show, like, the, the, you know, I've heard from people who have watched that entire show say it is much more, like, it's terrible as far as, like, the story. Um, I forget. I think it's that it takes forever to get off the ground, and they really don't do a good job of making it accessible to, to people who haven't read the comic. You know, so just, yeah. And I don't blame the people who worked on Inhumans. As far as I can tell, some of them were very passionate. I, th was it, was that one of Ike Perlmutter's? I'm really glad that he does not have a lot of influence about the, the movies. I guess not the Disney Plus shows either, because he certainly would not have allowed someone like Kamala Khan. Y yeah. I think sometimes we can all need to slow down and just reflect, and I really think the fact that more there are more negative ratings for She-Hulk than Inhumans, I think that's a moment to reflect. I think that's a moment to slow down and say, okay, maybe this is not about the quality, maybe this is about bias. You know, maybe people are just less willing to watch this kind of show. Right, another thing that, you know, as far as I understand, the, the, the you know, Inhuman show is, like, you know, because of the budget, there's not that much use of superpowers, but it is a superhero story. You know, it is, like, they are, they have superpowers, and they're going around using them, and I'm not sure if there is a clear villain, but I could imagine there there might be, you know. So, yeah, a lot of people found, and, and again, you know, some people, the most important thing to them is accuracy to the comics. 
and as far as I understand, it was very accurate to the comics. And that's, you know, some, some critics, some, some, you know, yeah, said that that made it worse, not better. Now, let's see, the, that brings us to IMDB, and that's also a place where it is very, very clear. So, I have not read all of the external reviews. Uh, let's see, when I, when I checked... I guess sometime yesterday, um, yeah, there were five links, and I could, you know, four of them were in English and not broken links, and uh, yeah, now there's 11, and uh, let's see, I would like to just briefly, so, so yes, user reviews, there are 1,388, and if you hide spoilers, it's 1,171. And this has an average rating of 5 out of 10. There are, uh, yeah, it has counted votes from 122,746 MDB users. And, oh, hold on, yeah, 133,545. 34% have rated this a 1 out of 10. And for those who might not know, that is the lowest rating that you can give on IMDb. It does not allow you to give a zero, which it's funny how many people are like, I wish I could give this a zero. I mean, you're already giving it the lowest. I feel like you've already said that with your vote. Anyway, 14.4% gave it a 10 out of 10. 87 gave it a 7, which, you know, I, I feel like a 7 makes a lot of sense. 7.7 .7 gave it an 8, 7.2 gave it a 6, 6.7 6 gave it a 2, 6.3 gave it a 5, 5.3 gave it a 4, 5.3 gave it a 3, 4.4 gave it a 9, and yeah, I really find it hard to believe that 45,416 individual voters all legitimately felt like this is the worst because that's what you're saying with a, with a one out of ten like you're saying this couldn't be worse I find that hard to believe that that, that many people f legitimately feel that without them viewing it through a, a bias and let's see Okay, so I, yeah, I'm just very briefly going to, men voting on this, let's see, all ages, 5.0, under 18, 5.2, 18 to 29, 4.8, 30 to 44, 5.0, and 45 plus 5.5 out of 10. Female voters. All ages, 6.8. Under 18, 5.3. And I can I can understand that. This really is not a show for, you know, you're, I don't think you can really relate to it if, if you're not. Like, I am in my 30s. If I had watched this when I was 18, I would not have been able to appreciate. Uh, yeah. 18 to 29, 6.6. .6. You know, we're talking about people who are starting to plan their future and, and or that uh, not only starting people who are really pursuing their their goals now you know and some people who are even in very similar situations you know may, maybe you know in college having graduated from college you know starting to, to get up yeah starting to get uh, create a career and 30 uh, yeah 30 to 44 age 6.8 out of 10, and 45 plus 6.9. So, this does have an audience. Doesn't appear to be young men. And, you know, women under 18 don't, yeah, either. But, yeah. And, you know, to, to be fair, um, the there are significantly more votes by males. You know, the... All ages, 
is 47,475, whereas females of all ages, 6,355. How does that add up to 133? Okay, uh, I do not know how that is. Yeah, anyway. That's also just a thing, like, I get it. For a long time, the MCU was catering to young men. So some men feel like, oh, the MCU has just left me behind. And that's also, you see in a bunch of reviews, I guess Marvel is no longer for me. I guess it's DC. I, I don't understand why you have to choose. Why can't... Friendly competition is supposed to bring out the, the best, right? As America, capitalism, isn't that what a lot of these guys believe in? Anyway. Yeah, some feel that Marvel, the MCU, has left them behind, and yeah, you know, that's frustrating. I remember, it's it's been a while since I felt left behind, but yeah, you know, when I was younger, uh, the you know, what was popular, what was, uh, you know, beloved by my peers was just not my kind of thing, and yeah, it sucks. It, it absolutely sucks. I don't think it's I don't think it's healthy to go around giving really negative reviews and ratings to things that are not really for you. Like, you know, I'm not, I've, d d you know, given really negative ratings to, to things that I just didn't like for, for bad reasons. And I've since come to regret it. And, ah, oh, crap, I'm sounding like some kind of, you know, um, I'm not saying that what I think and feel is what everyone, you know, but yeah, you know, the, uh, let's see, oh, that was not the, there we go, you know, if I go back and look at some of the things that I've given a really negative rating to, Um, uh, I gave a 1 out of 10 to Swordfish. That might not be quite as... Uh, yeah, you know, uh, I'm not sure it... It might... It might... It's probably closer to like a 5. Like, it's not a good movie, I would say. And I made a video talking about why I think that. But... A 1 out of 10, like, that kind of implies that it's completely incompetently made, you know. Um, there's probably something else here that is... Huh. Okay, I, I have to admit a number of the Okay, yeah, um, Fantastic Four from 2005, 1 out of 10. That's all, like, it's not incompetently made. It was, you know, I was frustrated. It, yeah, 2005, there were still a lot of bad superhero movies, you know, and yeah. What I'm saying is... It's not healthy to rest in this kind of, you know, if, if you are very, yeah, if, if you feel that something very popular is just not for you, you know, it doesn't always mean you should change. I'm glad that I did not change because, wow, when I was a teenager, holy crap, my peers were into just utter garbage and you know yeah I mean the music they listen to for example and I was fortunate enough to have a father who has taste in music you know so I grew up listening to Beatles and Elvis and they were listening to this just crappy 90s pop that just yeah anyway just, you know, focus on something else. It's it's just, it's not healthy. It's not 
f for yourself. It's not healthy. You're just you. If you focus on the things that make you angry, you're gonna be angry a lot of the time. And and again, I you know when I was a teenager, I was angry a lot of the time. Now, you know it's it's probably a good thing that by the time I started, you know, my, my YouTube channel, I think dates back to 2006, but I started making videos in 2009. And, you know, I, I don't think I'll get into exactly, you know, how old, what, what year I was born, but uh, suffice it to say, I was no longer a teenager. I was in my 20s, I had perspective on things, you know, so yeah, there's definitely things I've said in videos that I've later regretted, and, you know, some of the, some of my early content, but, yeah, you know, I, I tried from the start to be like, yeah, there are things that make me angry, but here's some positive as well, you know, I, I want to talk about the positive, and I certainly want to talk about why something is bad, you know, not, not just be angry that it's bad, you know, it's, it's, it's something that we, you know, when, when we're children, when we're teenagers, we don't have that much power, so the things that make us angry, we don't really, we can't do anything about, but, you know, when you get a little older, you do have a certain amount of choice. Anyway, so, I have talked some about the special effects. Yeah, one thing I want to add is stuff that we've seen before still looks great since they don't have to start over. So, Smart Hulk, Sorcerer Portals, that kind of thing. And some of the new stuff does look quite good. And... Yeah, I, I don't think there are too many effects in the show... And the, some of the stunt work is also really good. And, you know, for sure, some people would have wanted more stunt work. More stunts in the show. And I suppose that is... So, so yeah. You know, I recommend this show to just people who feel like they're really in the... Um, target audience, and yeah, you know, I, I feel like, yeah, if you don't know very much about misogyny, like, you know, a lot of the stuff on the show was not really new to me, you know, but yeah, I've been, yeah, misogyny has bothered me since I was a child, so the, you know, I was, I was very fortunate to have very progressive parents, you know, both of them instilling those values in me. I, I do realize if you grow up conservative, it is more difficult to, to break out, especially if where you live, you are surrounded by conservatives. It is very difficult to be the only voice, you know, saying a certain thing. But, but yeah, if you don't know basically what misogyny is, you know, I feel like this show is going to do a really good job giving you a lot of examples of it. It's a it's a good place to start. It's not it's not the be all end all. It you know, it's a it's a sitcom. Of course it's not gonna there's a limit to how deep it, it is able to get on on such a you know, such a huge issue. I yes, I I would use this if if I knew people who might, you know, you know, it ultimately it's not for everyone, but if I knew people who might somewhat enjoy it and who have no idea what misogyny is, you know, I would show them this so they could really appreciate, you know, yeah, the, the way that Ms. Marvel was, you know, that was the first time a lot, I'm and, you know, I have to admit, even myself, heard about, oh crap, I, what was it? Yeah, I really gotta, I gotta get the... Right. Um, so if I find that, let's see the the um, 
Yeah. Yes, the the partition of India. You know, yeah, that show was the first. A lot of us, you know, white people, you know, yeah, like it has been like you can go back many ger generations in my family before anyone had to had to flee a country and you know so I had been told how horrible it is but I don't really you know yeah no no one in my own family you know has has really experienced anything like that and yeah the the show told a lot of people you know that's a huge part of the the identity of yeah, you know, Pakistani Americans. So it's important that we know these things, you know. Like, if you don't know what misogyny is, you can't help women. And and you're not going to understand a lot of, you know, there's the, the stereotype of, ah, oh, women are just crazy. They're, they're angry about things that don't make sense to be angry about. Well, if you know what misogyny is, you understand why they're angry. You know, and, and a lot of time they aren't angry. Like you, I, I, where are all these constantly angry women that conservatives are always talking about? I've never met one, and I've met quite a few. You know, yeah. You know, if if you care about women, if you want them to to be happy in their lives, you know, learn about what misogyny is and try to help to fight it. Now, let's see. So, yes, on Disney Plus, I'm pr you, you have probably grokked by now that this is a Disney Plus show. Currently, the only extra is the trailer. But this would not be the first show, the first Disney Plus MCU show to get more extras after the finale has has aired, uh, Hawkeye, relatively soon after, I, I guess a week or two after the finale had aired, you know, there's now uh, there's 13 deleted scenes, and you know, gag reel is more fun than, but yeah, these 13 deleted scenes, some of them are extremely informational, and yeah, I could imagine that She-Hulk will you know, end up with that, and certainly, you know, if you're a fan of the MCU, all of the MCU is there, even, like, by now, even Marvel Netflix, you know, ev everything that is directly in the MCU, other than, you know, some of the Spider-Man movies, is on Disney+, Plus. a lot of it has, I, I, yeah, I think almost everything MCU by now has at least some, spe you know, special features, extras on Disney Plus and some of them have a ton like if you're passionate about the Guardians of the Galaxy movies about the Avengers movies and you haven't like checked there's some really great uh, supplemental material on on Disney Plus and let's see. yeah so my Objective rating for the show is a 7 out of 10, but my more subjective rating is an 8, 8 superhero lawyers out of 10, and it is very close to a 9. You know, the, yeah, for, for details on my issues, you know, I've, I've done a, you know, on all 9 episodes, I have done a video where I talk about my thoughts on the episode and sometimes also earlier episodes. Now, let's see. Yeah, and, you know, I'm not saying that, you know, every aspect is equally good or bad. I'm not saying that it's, you know, it, yeah, it is not a perfect show. But the the stuff that's especially good is, is the, the, um, uh, you know, really, really lifts up everything else, you know. Don't get me wrong, if you recast this and a bunch of the actors just weren't particularly good, if the, you know, yeah, I talked about the CG, the other special effects are quite good, like there's some really strong makeup effects, 
and just, yeah, you know, if those were, were not as good as they were, if, if this was not a show that understood the characters that appear on the show, yeah, I would think that it was a very bad show, but yeah, those are some of the reasons that I think it, it works as well as it does. And I have on other videos, I have, uh, was it my fresh video, maybe, talked about, you know, I think, you know, I, uh, recently the, the Take did a video talking about that there is a backlash against feminism and the Me Too movement, and yeah, and, you know, I mentioned earlier, you know, sometimes we have to reflect. I, I am going to try to figure out, you know, yeah, I, I hope that that in the future feminism will again be seen. You know, I really, I wish that the Amber Heard, Johnny Depp trial had not been available to the public. And I really wish people would reconsider, like a lot of people give Johnny Depp so much, um, what's it called? You know, they, they basically, they're like, ah, you know, Johnny... He's, you know, he's in so many movies I love. He's, I love so many of his performances. Yes, Amber Heard lied. Amber Heard was abusive towards Johnny Depp, and I don't think that's okay. I don't think it's okay for, for women to do those kinds of things, but that does not mean that it is an equivalent problem to men being abusive towards women. And, yeah. Anyway, I hope that in the future you know, feminism will have have a resurgence, you know, I, I forget exactly, ah, I guess he's, yeah, I think that was before it was called canceling, but I guess he's canceled now, but there was a YouTuber who said that the biggest problem that feminism has is not one of intentions or goals, but of communication, and, you know, he, he, provided some really great examples. Uh, you know, among other things, the, the Ban Bossy campaign, where, you know, for sure, it's, you know, men should not be telling women, don't be, uh, you know, don't, don't be assertive, don't have ambition. But banning words is just, that's not, you know, it, uh, it's, it's pithy. It's, a, it's something you can put in an ad, you know, Ban Bossy. But what you really, you know, what you want is for people to be better. It's not really, uh, it's not the specific word by itself. And, and banning words, just, it has such a terrible history. Uh, you know, that, that just, yeah. And, and yeah, I, I think there might be, you know, I, I don't feel like I am equipped to properly like, I, I am not, I have not, I do not have lived experience as a woman, whether trans or cis. I, I do not feel it is my place to criticize feminism. You know, it, it is a movement started by women, and a big part of the focus is trying to improve things for men. Once again, not only women, also men, but... Yeah, I I don't think it's my place to to say, but but yeah, I think there is some, you know, it appears to me that there is an an issue there. And yeah, you know, um, feminism, you know, it, it didn't start yesterday. It has been around for a while, and it, yeah, like the the, um, it has had its ups and downs over the course of its existence. And, and again, you know, that is also something like more recent feminist movements acknowledge that some of the earlier feminist movements, you know, they're, they're, they did not focus enough on women of color, for example, you know, and yeah. I hope in the future that trans-exclusionary radical feminism is not the only feminism that is seen as, you know, a positive by so much of of the middle and the conservative yeah
but but yeah, I I do think that there is a chance that in the future this is one of those shows that you know if if feminism becomes more more popular again, more you know accepted again, that this is the kind of thing that you know people will reevaluate. You know, once again the the critics have already said, yep, yeah, this this is good, but you know it does matter a lot what the the regular viewer thinks of yeah so i am yeah this is my ranking worst to best keeping in mind i love all of them they're all amazing i'm ranking how much i love them not whether or not i love them the mcu disney plus shows so the overall show worst to best loki what if she hulk hawkeye the falcon Winter soldier moon knight ms marvel and wandavision Finale for the ones that have ended the run. Worst to best, Hawkeye, the Falcon Lunar Soldier, Moon Knight, Ms. Marvel, She-Hulk, and WandaVision. And the pilot, worst to best, uh, oh, hold on. There's something wrong here. Um, I missed that. Um, right, yes. So, Pilot, worst to best. What if She-Hulk, Loki, Hawkeye, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Moon Knight, Ms. Marvel, and WandaVision. So, let's Yeah, so, this is the end of the video. So, hit me up in the comments section. What is your favorite MCU Disney Plus show? Uh, what... Which one are you most looking forward to of the upcoming ones? If you like this video, please thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell like it is a misogynistic prick. There should be a link to my main channel page, one or more links to stuff like relevant playlists, a suggested video for you to watch on the screen right about now. I put out one vlog per week, reviewing and sharing spoiler thoughts on a movie. Let's see, and one talking about my spoiler from thoughts on the most recent episode of the current Disney Plus Star Wars show, which these days is Andor. Recently, the review and thoughts videos tend to come out very similar to this one, but with thoughts in the same video instead of in a separate video, since its running time is significantly shorter than a show. In other words, if you want more videos like this, you're in luck. You can check out my back catalog as well as catch my video next week. I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoy watching and recording, and I'll catch you next time.